Liz, congrats on the win. First Bellator victory under your belt. How do you feel? I feel good. Um, you know, I came out tonight and I said to myself, it wasn't going to be like other fights. This is a new chapter. I need to get a strong finish. There are a few opportunities. Like I felt her ankle pop and I thought for sure I saw the hand raise. She's going to tap. And I just got so stuck on it instead of scrambling to a different position. I know it cost me that second round staying in that position. But in the third round, I came out, listened to my corners and made sure that I finished that fight. And were you surprised at how tough she was? Um, you know, she had her, I, I don't want to say her moments, but, you know, she, she was hanging in there with you, and, and sh she did have some success. So were you surprised at, at the challenges that she presented? No, not at all. I knew that that's exactly how she was going to come out. You know, we studied tape on her, and she wasn't a slouch, and I said that from the beginning. This is another veteran. And certainly she was a lot heavier <laughs> than I had anticipated, and that definitely played a role when competing against her. Talk to me about that. Was that frustrating at all for you to, to have an opponent come in and you make the weight and then they come in so much over? Yeah, absolutely. My corners and I were talking about, we, we all believe that if you, if you miss weight, automatically 20% of your purse goes to your opponent. And then it should be that every pound after that is a point off the fight. So if it goes, because you're already in a deficit, as a person that took the time to cut the weight, that did all the training, did everything right, you're in a deficit and it's going to cost you a fight potentially. That's not fair. So I believe that every pound over is a point. So that will really encourage fighters to make weight every single time and to be professionals like they're supposed to. You've been through so much in your career, major uh, main events and all that kind of stuff. Is, are there nerves going into a fight like this, so, you know, your debut fight, major free agent, and if there aren't nerves going into the fight, was there nerves in the third round when it was close and you're like, shit, I can't lose this debut? <laughs> you know, there's always nerves. Uh, it's certainly over the years, the degree of which the adrenaline and the nerves happen has definitely changed. But the day of, I'm trying to spin it. The later in the evening that it goes, the longer that I'm sitting there thinking about the fight, thinking about the things I could do correctly or incorrectly, and I start picking myself apart. You know, I'd love to have fights earlier. I know, obviously, that can't happen. But, yeah, it doesn't matter what point in my career. It's definitely hard to sit there and you just have to deal with your own thoughts going into it. Now, you mentioned Alima and a fight with Alima like McFarlane. Everybody probably wants that fight. This fight that makes a lot of sense. But you also talked about you're fine with working your way up. Yesterday, Scott Coker mentioned the idea he would like a women's flyweight Grand Prix. Now, that seems like a perfect way to work your way up and get the title. Is that something if they're not, you're not in a title shot next, you hope that Bellator does and you'd love to be a part of? Yeah, I think that a Grand Prix would be amazing. You know, all of us fight for the opportunity to be the contender. Alima gets to sit on the sidelines, drink some Budweiser, watch it all go down, and get to see and experience every single fighter and know who she's getting into. I think that's amazing, and I'd love to do something like that. Congratulations on the win, Liz. Thank you. I got to ask, in the first round, were you trying to attempt a twister? Because it looked like you were trying that because you had the leg locked, and that's usually a sign someone's going for a twister. I, you know, absolutely. It's one of those things I've been talking about. You know, I've been embarrassed about my own performance as 10th Planet representative. I've wanted to show that, that I do 10th Planet, I want to go out there a strong finish, and I want to get something from the truck, whether that was a banana split, a crotch ripper, it, whether it was a twister, whatever the opportunity was going to give me, I wanted to do it from the truck, and so I was definitely hunting for that. And uh, I'm just curious to know, are you sticking with 125 for the future of your career? Any, ch any talk about going back up to 135? Um, yeah, just talk about that. I mean, if Bellator introduced a 135, I would love the opportunity to, to have a belt there at 135 and go back up. I do feel really good at 125. I feel like that's a good weight for me. But the opportunity to hold a belt in two divisions is really appealing, and 145 is way too big for me. Giancarlo? Hi, Liz. Congrats on the win. Uh, you made your debut tonight in front of no fans. So uh, can you just talk to us about on the mental aspect of that, like coming in? Did that help you at all that you're making your debut in another promotion with no fans? Um, I don't think it helped it being making a debut in another promotion without a crowd. Uh, it certainly did help knowing that uh, my germaphobe side doesn't have to worry about people touching me that I don't know. That's always, I bring my defense wipes, and all I can think is, please have a shower at the stadium so I can shower afterwards. Because all I can think about is, I don't know what my opponent has or doesn't have, and everybody's touching me, and I'm freaking out. So it was nice to just go out there and not have to worry about having to appease other people. Because I feel like when I don't shake fans' hands, it upsets a lot of people, and that's not what I'm going out to do. I'm just trying to keep focus and keep my mind in that fight and get there to that cage and perform the best of my ability. And sometimes fans take offense to that. And I mean nothing against them, no disrespect. So it was nice to come, come out and just go for the fight and only concentrate on that. And you mentioned there about uh, that you want to work your way up in Bellator. You want to just get the title shot if you get it. Uh, it's great. But uh, is there another fighter right now in the flyweight division that you look at as being a great challenge for you in your next fight? No, I think that Bellator is gonna, uh, done, has done such a great job with the flyweight division and building up all these females and bringing in all these skilled fighters that all of them look like a really good matchup and a really good challenge that I would love to face. John Eric Poli. 
Hi, Liz. Congratulations on the win. Thank you. Um, so my first question for you, uh, going into that last round, what was the message like in the corner? Did you guys have it scored 1-1? And what did, they tell you, what did they tell you as you headed out for that round? Yeah, exactly. They told me that it was 1-1. Uh, and of course, it, it doesn't matter what it is. You can never guarantee that you actually won that round. So we knew for sure I lost a second. I messed up by holding on to that ankle for too long, thinking that she was tapping. And I held on to that thought when I, when I should have just let it go and moved on. And it cost me that second round. So they told me, look, this is the third round. We go and we finish this. And that has always been my goal is to finish this fight. I didn't want to go to decision. And I knew that I had to give, that she was going out there strong, but I had to go out there stronger. Jay Anderson. Liz, congratulations on the win. Uh, first of all, I mean, it's been over a year before you, uh, for since you last fought. How did things feel uh, getting back in there in terms of any rust, getting your timing back? You know, it felt so good to be not only getting back after so long, but getting back and doing it with a new promotion, starting a new chapter with faces that are smiling. And, and I know a lot of these people and just having a, a chance to reshape and show everybody that I have more to offer. And whether that's a year later, six months later, I'm just glad to be back in there. And obviously, I mean, it seems like the path is going to lead you to the title at some point or other. Have you and Alima, because I know you're our friends, have you talked in the past about the possibility of fighting one another, what that would look like and how you would go about putting that friendship to the side? Yeah, absolutely. You know, Alima and I have talked about it since we were purple belts and we were doing jiu-jitsu tournaments with each other. Our coaches just tell us if we face each other, just either tap out at the same time or tell the promotion that you're not willing to go against each other. And we ultimately always said that no matter what, we we're going to face each other and put on a bigger show against each other than anybody else. Throughout our whole career, when we've had opportunities, I asked her if she'd go to the UFC. She said no, and I thought about coming to Bellator. We said that no matter what, we're willing to throw down because we know at the end of the night, we can go out to dinner, we can hug each other, we'll still go home and be friends, that this wouldn't compromise anything, and that you can put on a better performance as somebody you know genuinely cares about you and is going out there just to fight. Last question, Rick. Congratulations, Liz. Um, um, my question is, how was um, um, my question is, during those three right um, during those three rounds, how frustrating was it to get those um, trying to get those submissions attempts um, submissions attempts during that fight? Uh, my submission attempts or hers? Um, yours. Uh, no, yeah, I was just a little bit frustrated because I felt like I had a good position, her hand was up, and I felt it pop, so I thought for sure she was going to tap, but unfortunately, I moved my hand placement, she did a good job of defending it, and I held on to it too long, I just got overzealous, and I really wanted that finish, I was hunting for a finish tonight, and when I saw that opportunity, I really wanted it, and when I was in the truck position, I saw other opportunities, she did really good at keeping her hips away from me, so I was really frustrated because all I wanted tonight was a finish, I didn't want it to go to decision, I didn't want to have that start my time in Bellator with it going that way. So I just want to come out strong and I was able to take advantage of that when the opportunity presented itself. Thanks, Liz. Congratulations. Thank you.